Hello everyone, I am Azrin Darim from MC2424B and today's workout session brought to you by IPRMNC Melaka Chapter UITM Alu Gajah Melaka. And today's main topic will be Hunger One Humanity Zero. And this topic is related to Sustainable Development Goal 2 which is Zero Hunger. When we hear the term zero hunger, we understand that it refers to the issue of a lack of food resources. However, there is another issue that comes to mind when we discuss zero hunger, and that is the problem of Somalis with a lack of food resources that contributes to their health issues. I believe that's how practically everyone will think. Basically, there is a lot of other issues regarding to this term. So before we begin our podcast, I'm going to go over the specific of zero hunger because I'm pretty sure there are still some people out there who don't know what it is. One of the primary sustainable development objectives for 2030 is to eliminate hunger. What does that actually imply though? Zero hunger according to the UN is more than just a number. The second sustainable development goal SDG is to end hunger achieve food security and improve nutrition, and to promote sustainable agriculture. This is more true summary of the goal. The UN outlines five targets to demonstrate our progress towards zero hunger as a way to gauge success in reaching this goal. So the first one is a year-round access to sufficient wholesome and safe food, and all type of malnutrition, increase in agriculture output, and also resilient agriculture system and sustainable food system. And the last one is plant different plants and seeds. That is the overview of zero hunger. But what exactly is the issue until zero hunger appears? Prior to that, we will proceed with the title. I'm sure many will struggle to grasp what the title means when they read it. Basically, this title appears and sounds simple, yet it has a very deep meaning. Hunger 1, Humanity 0 This title is a type of score relating to this topic where Hunger 1, the score 1 represents the issue of increasing hunger and Humanity 0, the score represents the issue of losing humanity in humans That is the meaning and it can be observed that although the issue of hunger is increasing in our country the worth of humanity in each individual is declining I will elaborate on the title or score so let's talk about the hunger, which is now where it gets a score of zero. Okay, the problem of hunger in Malaysia may not be as severe as it is in Syria, Somalia or other countries. However, we can see that our economy is in crisis, which is exacerbating the issue of hunger for Malaysia, particularly the B40 group. In 2021, the Sun Daily published a report stating that child starvation in Malaysia was still a problem. In light of these problems, Malaysians were understandably horrified to learn that two Myanmar toddlers recently died on Langkawi after consuming food from the trash. Most people were curious as to how a middle-income nation like Malaysia could experience a hunger crisis. How did this problem arise? Even if this happened to the foreign people, Malaysians themselves experience it as well. We can observe that many people in Malaysia are suffering to the point where they have no access to food or housing and their children cannot even afford to go to the school. We can be seen this situation in Ustaz Ibit Liu's social media who engage in several humanitarian initiatives. It's important to keep in mind that eating improperly can also mean that someone doesn't get to eat. The truth is that while many B40 youngsters may appear obese, leading one to believe that they have access to adequate food, their outward appearance may actually indicate that they consistently consume only food that is heavy in carbohydrate and sugar in order to satisfy their tummies. Malaysia was ranked 58th out of 116 countries in the 2021 Global Hunger Index. And with a score of 12.8, Malaysia is considered to have a moderate position. While being on the moderate list may seem unimportant, activists and research analysts say it should be taken seriously. And in reality, there is more than enough food in our country. The issue with hungry children is affordability. Therefore, when it comes to the affordability factor, 
There's a second problem that arises as a result of this factor, namely hidden hunger. From this point on, the problem of hidden hunger arises, which is a widespread in our nation. Some of you must be unaware of the problem of hidden hunger, but what is the true reason behind this hidden hunger, and what it is exactly? If you are curious about hidden hunger, which is exactly what we are doing and fasting right now, you are not alone, because we are not knowing what it is, but we are becoming accustomed to it, or it has to become normal for us, and those around us have normalized it. Because of inflation, when the price of raw materials and food rises, we not realize we find ourselves in cycle of hidden hunger. Hidden hunger is an issue of lack of nutrition, food or malnutrition, where the food either lacks essential nutrition such as vitamins and basic minerals, affecting the physical and mental development of those involved. The statistic of cases of stunting, weight loss, and obesity among school children today are clear indication that confirms the existence of this silence enemy that should not be taken lightly. As reported by Utu Samisha, a World Bank study from the middle of 2021 in Malaysia called the COVID-19 High Frequency, which is the short form, is High Five. Household monitoring survey found that one in four low-income households in this country experienced food shortage from mid-April to mid-June 2021. So the population group of low incomes are the one where this issue is most apparent. Their purchasing power is being reduced as a result of inflation and the rising cost of living which limits their ability to spend. One of the factors contributing to unbalanced and unhealthy eating habits was the necessity of rationing daily spending. In this circumstance, people just to eat maintain their current level of well-being rather than to consume a balanced diet as is advised. This is the issue that Malaysians are truly dealing with. There are still a lot of Malaysians who only eat when absolutely essential, with some even eating only once a day to reduce their hunger. Unaware of it, this has truly happened to us, especially to us students who are among those dealing with this problem. We have to eat in less and only eat when required, and the diets of many university students are also unhealthy. We frequently consume fast food and instant meals like Maggi and other things. In relation to this matter, recent news emerged stating that our Prime Minister Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim must address the problem of food security right away. Additionally, this issue needs to be resolved quickly because food security is deteriorating particularly since the country was hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. And based on data from the Global Nutrition Report 2022, the chairman of the Malaysian Right to Food Association, which in the short form is HADAM, H-A-D-A-M, Professor Dr. Wan Abdul Manan Wan Muda claimed that 2 million people in the nation or 6.3% of the population are currently hungry or unable to eat enough to sustain themselves. So the government needs to take a number of steps to address this problem, including making sure that the price of everyday foods and drinks which are currently rising do not continue to rise. Additionally, the government can work to develop a food aid program that can assist all sectors of the population. HDAM Hadam is therefore attempting to convince the government in this manner. The government should focus on resolving this issue of Malaysians' hidden hunger. After doing a little study, I discovered that in order to ensure the future of both the people and the nation of Malaysia, the government must carry out its duty to the best of its ability by establishing a ministry in charge of the nation's food security. Because of the different challenges that have involved and are tied to the issue of hunger which has clouded the country's future, ensuring enough food is a critical because it has indirectly enhanced Malaysia's health and well-being. So to all of you, we will proceed to the next session which is about Humanity Zero. As we all know, Humanity received a zero score on this issue. And the reason for this is that Humanity in people is diminishing, particularly in relation to this issue. What is the proof that Malaysian people's Humanity is deteriorating? 
Yes, we do not deny that Malaysians, including those involved with NGOs, have undertaken various initiatives to assist those in need of food, such as donating kitchen items, participating in food distribution activities, and so on. Several things have been done, but why is the problem still present? So I'm going to share with you all a few issues concerning humanity. In fact, Malaysians are so concerned that their worry must be restricted in order to prevent excessive waste. However, that wasteful attitude contributes to inhumanity. It is like wasting food equals zero humanity. During Ramadan 2021, any NGO or individual is prohibited from distributing food donations to the homeless directly around the city centre. And DBKR also st stated that this policy was adopted to prevent the emergence of trash and pollution as well as to control the spread of COVID-19 that time. So waste has been generated as a result of too many food distribution activities as seen above. So here the people who receive donated food must take it with decency because there are some of us who are greedy and take all the food until it ends up in trash. There is no humanity as a result of greed. So this problem has also happened in other countries where they limit how much food a person can eat that is appropriate for their age as well as other criteria. Next, and this is a really interesting topic for me to talk about since last month was Ramadan and this month is ID Fitri. So selamat hari raya to all my dear listeners. However, these two men are jam-packed with various food sales and food dishes to liven up the Ramadan and Hari Raya celebrations. But I'm sure everyone notice where there will be a lot of waste in this festival. The habit of eating a lot of food because it follows the appetite that eventually swells when we are full and the food we don't eat is just thrown away. From here, we must get serious about food waste. Do all of you know that the tallest twin tower in the world are in our country, which is Malaysian Petronas Twin Tower, standing at 451.9 meters tall. Now imagine 16 of these twin towers being filled to the brim with food waste. This could well be the reality if we don't do something about the problem food waste in our country. So according to the Solid Waste Management and Public Cleansing Corporation, which is SWCorp, the total volume of food waste by 2022 will be adopted filled 16 of the twin buildings. Another interesting fact, which is sequenced around 16,688 tons of food per day which is enough to feed over 2.2 million people three times a day. Food waste is more than just the rubbish they generate or accumulate during or after meals. There are numerous more products that can be termed food waste, such as leftovers or rejected food items. Rejected items, particularly food products from farmers or suppliers, account from the majority of food waste found in landfills. Most retailers will reject unsightly or deformed products, leaving farmers with no choice but to discard them. So is there any way to solve this problem? However, not all is doomed. Initiatives are being conducted worldwide, including in our nation, to address the extremely important problem of food waste. For instance, hotels have joined the trend by charging customers for any leftover or food that is wasted at buffet or when dining in their restaurants. Dinners will be more aware of how much they are placing on their plates and take care not to overfill them if this were to happen. Despite the fact that there are many potential solutions, none of them will work if we continue to waste food, if our attitude are not changing. In order to cure this problem and stop it from getting worse, I want to share a few tips with all of my listeners regarding the issue. The first one is we must plan before we buy things. Know the exact of ingredients and materials that you need to make your meals so that there will be no leftovers every time you cook. And then the second one is be creative and be brave to recycle your food. Recycling is not only applicable to solid material like pasta, glass or paper. Food can be recycled too and you can come up with a new ideas and creation from your leftovers. Not only will this help to save the environment, you'll also be saving your money.
And the last one is know that the expiration date does not signify that the food can no longer be eaten. It's there to inform the consumer that the product will no longer be in the best condition if the date expires. However, that doesn't mean that the food can't be consumed. There's no need to throw it away. You have to check first. If there have any fungus or anything, you can throw it away. But if it still can be eaten, you can eat it. As a recap, we must all work together to prevent the problem from spreading. Yes, there are numerous NGO working to assist victims of this crisis. However, if we are unable to resist the urge to buy too much food, resulting in waste. They are all of our efforts will be futile. I hope that this podcast can provide some knowledge to all listeners and that it can shift the score from hunger zero to humanity one in the future. That's all from me. I hope you all enjoy my podcast and thank you for listening to my podcast. Bye everyone.